t -t today we will talk about XLM and and XRP but in a little bit more of a technical sense where we will actually talk about how these two uh, protocols fees actually set them up to be very uh, adoptable by large financial institutions and can further go to show that XLM and XRP can and probably will be adopted to a very large extent by financial institutions to conduct cross-border payments. So I got this uh, idea to connect all of this um, from this uh, tweet by 707 Crypto. And the answer that I came across that made a lot of sense to the uh, financial institution adoption part of this is actually here on this page. But I will come back to that at the end after we have explained why XRP and XLM are so uh, uniquely p p positioned here. So, of course, if you look at Stellar, my blockchain, things look different, right? Because you're not staking anything other than your reputation. Um, we don't pay out any incentives to the validators. Uh, and, you know, not coincidentally, it has the lowest fees of pretty much any public blockchain out there, often by many orders of magnitude. So what is it that Stellar does? Uh, how does Stellar achieve security uh, without having to pay out these incentives, which ultimately become a drag on, on transactions and real world assets? Well, what we use is uh, something that we call proof of agreement, right? Because now everything has to be proof of something these days. Um, we used to call it a federated Byzantine agreement, but that was kind of a, a mouthful. So uh, the basic idea is to uh, make agreement actually the basis of your consensus protocol, in particular, the desire for organizations to want to agree with one another pairwise, right? Okay, so that um, is not proof of work and it's not POS either. Uh, it is unofficially referred to as proof of as proof of agreement. And um, the tr transaction fees for uh, the XLM uh, pr 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 protocol are 0 0.00001 XLM per transaction. So obviously, it is an extremely low cost uh, pr protocol, even when the price of XLM uh, increases a whole lot. So uh, comparing that to XRP, um, I don't think we should expect it to be uh, too much different, right? Because um, we know that XLM was originally a fork of the XRPL. And even though it has uh, changed its protocol over time to, uh, in my hu 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 humble opinion, um, be much more uh, adaptable than the XRPL has shown t t to be at this point in time, um, they still work um, pretty much the exact same in terms of uh, common um, semantics. So uh, as for the XRPL, it it is not proof of work or POS either. It is a federated consensus algorithm, which is uh, what was uh, explained here, where it was a... Um, a federated B B Byzantine agreement or s something like that. So uh, essentially, th th these two protocols work the exact same way and have extremely low fees. So uh, the thing about uh, an XRP tr transaction is it is uh, calculated in terms of dr 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 drops and uh, depending on what kind of transaction it is it it will change a bit but uh, a drop is equal to point 
0.000001 XRP. So uh, that would come out to be a little bit cheaper. Um, well, if you multiply that t t times 10, it would be uh, 0 0.00001, which is um, the exact same as uh, an XLM typical tr tr transaction. That is uh, not really too su surprising. Um, the only uh, significant d d difference in terms of uh, transactions in between these two is that um, the XRPL is a deflationary uh, protocol, whereas XLM is inflationary. So um, that can change the uh, t tokenomics over time, but with more and more adoption, that shouldn't make too much of an impact on uh, on a a XLM, and it will only help uh, the price of XRP over time. And it also goes to show why um, the price of XRP can't be too cheap because um, the more XRP that is actually tr transacted at a low cost, um, the more uh, XRP is removed from supply. And I actually did a video on that where uh, I explained how the uh, the XRP b b burn rate uh, can actually be a pretty good way to predict the price of XRP. So if we compare this to things like bit, bit, Bitcoin, where it is obviously much more um, expensive, in 2021 it topped out at about uh, an average fee of uh, 62.79, and in ETH. Uh, that topped out in 2021 at about 71.72. I remember when uh, I tried the whole NFT thing at the 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 the, 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 the end of the craze, a uh, tr transaction fee of uh, I think in between about 100 and 150. So that is not actually catching uh, the points in time where it was uh, that um, expensive because it is an average. Now, the uh, c conversion from proof of work over to P P POS has improved its tr transaction fees, but it is not a, it is not an asset and a protocol that would make sense to conduct a lot of tr transactions on. So the, the other one th that I've thought of that might be in this same ca ca category uh, would be HBAR because the unique thing about HBAR is that they have pegged, well, they have uh, made the HBAR tr tr transaction fees to be constant in terms of USD and not in terms of HBAR. So as HBAR increases in value over time, the uh, extremely cheap transactions will uh, remain what they are right now or until they uh, propose some kind of an amendment to actually change that. And here I found uh, this from Upside Down d d Data. He uh, explains it pr 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 pretty well. And what the devs have talked about, the HBAR devs have talked about, is that you know they want to encourage enterprise adoption of the network of HBAR. They want this to be something that businesses incorporate into their workflows. And the reason that they've given for why they've decided to denominate transaction fees in terms of US dollar and not HBAR amount is exactly this predictability that you don't need to worry about what the price of HBAR is at a given point in time. You know that you're always going to be spending the same amount of dollars for every single transaction of a given type. Whereas with a, something like AVAX, it becomes a lot harder for a business to incorporate this into their back end 
because you know they can't budget for cost. And frankly, if the price of AVAX goes up too high, it might not even be economically feasible for them to do it. It might not be profitable any, anymore for them to be using AVAX on their back end if these transaction fees get too expensive. You know, if So I uh, decided to attempt to c c calculate uh, what the average yearly HBAR transaction fees are, and I'm not sure if I've gotten this 100% right, but uh, the HBAR mainnet right now is averaging about 2,000 transactions per second, and um, that seems to line up fairly well with what I was able to find online. So if you take the number of seconds in one year, times uh, this value of 0 0.0001, which I will do here, then that is uh, 3,153 per year. And um, I got a larger number when I did this uh, before I hit record, so I probably fat fingered something at some point. but. In my opinion, um, things like XRP, XLM, and HBAR are probably the most uh, institutionally um, adoptable assets out there, not just because of their uh, unique tech, but because of their um, institutional and enterprise c c c connections. I think that Ripple has partnered up with over 20 countries at this point to uh, at least uh, pilot a CBDC. Um, XLM has uh, partnered up with, I think, under five at this point. And uh, as far as HBAR goes, you have their uh, g g uh, g g governing council, which has tons and tons of huge uh companies on there so that all kind of brings me back to uh, the chart at the beginning of this uh, clip here where he was explaining how XLM and of course therefore XRP can be um, extremely uh, interesting for uh, institutional adoption however the one thing that actually uh, even makes these more institutionally adoptable than even something like HBAR was actually uh, put in this t -t -t tweet here. And it's not confirmed information, but he or she or th th they say that we have heard that institutions can't pay v v v v v v validators due to the process not meeting the requirements of third-party risk. So that is very important, uh, especially in terms of institutional um, uh, 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 institutional adoption, because that is not only what XRP and, uh, and XLM are co concentrating on, but it means that their pr pr protocols are already uh, designed in, 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 in a way that would make them more immediately uh, institutionally uh, 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 adoptable at this point in time, even if the uh, e even if the annual fees for HBAR are ch ch cheaper, according to my um, Windows ca calculator here.